Hi and welcome back to the videos for section 11.4. This is the second video of two videos uh, and this one we'll be doing just a couple examples similar to the uh, early the ellipse and the parabola videos. So the first example we're going to look at is as follows. We have x plus 1 squared over 4 plus y minus 2 squared over 9 is equal to 1. So let's run through. I didn't tell you. Is this an ellipse? Is it a hyperbola? Is it horizontal? Is it vertical? So with this problem, we want to do the following. We want to find the foci. We want to find the vertices. And we want to sketch it. So this is absolutely typical of the kind of problem you'll see on exam three or the final exam. So I didn't tell you anything about it. I just gave you this equation, said find these piece of information and sketch it. So let's go through how we would do this problem. First and foremost, this must be one. It is, so we're okay there. Now, we need to figure out, is this an ellipse or is it a hyperbola? So what do we do? We look at this guy right here. It's a plus, so that tells me what? It's an ellipse. So now that I know it's an ellipse, I want to know, is it vertical or is it horizontal? So with the ellipse, what's going to change? The A or the B value. So whichever is the bigger number, that's my A squared. So that means 9 is my A squared. And because the 9 is under the Y term, that tells me what? It tells me this is vertical. So from a partial credit standpoint, even if you do nothing else from here, if you at least tell me, okay, this is the equation of a vertical ellipse, I'm going to give you some credit. To even to get to that point, you have to be able to interpret a bunch of the information here. Now, in terms of figuring out this information, Obviously, this is a shifted conic. We got these parentheses with this. So what I want to know is, where is my center? So the center is going to be opposite of what I see. I see plus 1. That means it's minus 1. I see minus 2, which means it's going to be positive 2. So if I want to try sketching this guy already, My center is at negative 1, 2. So that's negative 1 and 2. So I'll put a little C by it. There's the center of this ellipse. Now, I need my foci and I need my vertices. So the vertices, let's work on that first. Our vertices, we need our A value and our B value, right? So A squared, we already said is 9 which means A is equal to 3. Now, in the past, if this was centered at the origin, what would we say? Because it's vertical, it's going to be 0 and then plus or minus 3. So if this wasn't shifted, we have our origin, it's up 3, down 3, and that gives us our uh, major vertices. But we are not centered at the origin. We have this guy here. So we need to subtract 1 from this one. And we need to add 2 to both of these. And then we need to figure this out. Because we're going to get two different ones now. The first one we have is what? 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And then 2 plus 3 is positive 5. And then we also have 0 minus 1 is negative 1, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So that tells us our major vertices are at negative 1, positive 5, and negative 1, minus 1. So that's good. I should be in line with the center point than I am with my major vertices. Now I need my minor ones, my B values. So I have b squared is equal to what? Well, it's this other value, 4. So that means that b is equal to 2. 
So just like we did with the major vertices, we have to do the same. Before, it would have been what? It would have been 0 and then plus or minus 2. I'm sorry, we've got to reverse these because we're talking now about the horizontal. So it would have been plus or minus 2 and then 0. But again, we need to account for the fact that the center has been moved. So this is minus 1 for our x value that we change it by, and then 2 for the y value. So what does this give us here? The first one is negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1, and 2 plus 0 is 2. And we have what? Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, and 2 plus 0 is 2. So that means our minor axis has the points 1, 2, which is here, and negative 3, 2, which is here. So now you can see we've got the four points. We know this is a vertical ellipse, so if we want to sketch this already, we should get a picture that looks like that. So these are our vertices, these four values. But we also need the foci. So for the foci, we're going to need our value for c. So we know c squared, and it's always what? a squared, b squared. And the only question is, do I use a plus or minus there? Well, don't forget, it's always opposite of what the basic equation is. So we have plus here, which means we need to use minus in calculating the c squared. So that means c squared is a squared, which is 9, minus b squared, which is 4. So that means c squared is 5, or c is equal to the square root of 5. So because this is a vertical ellipse, our values before would have been what? They would have been uh, 0, and then plus or minus square root of 5. But now our center has been shifted, so what do we need to do? We need to subtract 1 from our x value and add 2 to the y value. So that will give us what two answers? It gives us 0 minus 1 is negative 1, and then 2 plus square root of 5. That's one of our foci point. The other is 0 minus 1 is negative 1, and 2 minus square root of 5. So that gives us our value for the foci. So we answered everything it was asked. We wanted the foci, that's the last values we calculated. We wanted the vertices, we figured those out, which then gave us the four points on the graph. And then we were able to sketch what this vertical ellipse, because we knew from the start it was supposed to be a vertical ellipse, what it should look like. So that's example one. So if you need to catch up or backtrack, figure out where numbers came from, go ahead. I'm going to erase this, and we'll look at another example. Kind of help you guys get started on it. And then I'll have you guys pause and try to finish it out. Figuring out what information you need. So we have the following. We want to find the center. The foci. The vertices. And asymptotes. And this is if necessary. So that means what? So if this ends up being an equation for a hyperbola, obviously we would need the equations for the asymptotes. And then once we do all that, we want to sketch it. So a lot of information going on with this guy. And the equation we're given is the following. 9x squared minus 72x minus 16y squared minus 32y equals 16. So I can already hear the grumbling through the video. 
what is this guy doing? This doesn't look anything like we've done yet. No, it doesn't. And that's why we're doing this one. So that if you get something like this on the exam, exam three of the final exam, you know exactly how to uh, tackle this thing. So you see I kind of left some space here and I did it purposely and why is that? Well, we're going to need to complete the square here. And when, once we have the, once we do completing the square, this will give us something that looks more familiar to like the example we just did. So for this first one, what do we have to do before we can even do the complete the square process? Remember, when we complete the square, our A value, the value in front of the square term, has to be 1. Which means I need to factor out a 9 here. So I get what? x squared minus 8x. And on the right we have 16. We have to be careful though, though. Because once we put in this value, don't forget we actually have to multiply it by 9 before we take it over to the right side to balance this out. So let's look at this one. I'll switch colors so we can keep track of which values are going with what. So we have what? If we're going to complete the square on the x portion, we have b is equal to minus 8. So 1 half of b is negative 4. So 1 half of b, that whole thing squared, is negative 4 squared, which is 16. So that means I'm going to put plus 16 in here. But now what did I do? I didn't just add 16 to this equation. I added 9 times 16. So 9 times 16 is what? It's 144. So since I just added 144 to the left side, I need to add 144 to the right side to keep this thing balanced. So now, let me switch colors again, and let's look at this one. So first thing we have to do is what? We have to factor out a 16. So I have y squared minus 2y. So now if I complete the square with this portion, what do I get? Well, I get b is equal to minus 2. So 1 half of b is negative 1. So 1 half of b squared is positive 1, which means I'm going to add 1 inside the parentheses. But I didn't add 1 to this equation. What did I do? What did I, do? I have a minus 16 out front. Uh-oh, let me make a change here. This value here, so actually I suppose I should move this like that. No, but I don't want to do that because then it looks like I'm multiplying. If I factor out a 16 to the front of here, this value has to be a plus because I'm, I have this minus sign out in front. So essentially, I guess let me do it this way. So I have what? Plus minus 16y, minus 32y, etc. So if I factor out this minus 16, I'm left with y squared. And if I factor minus 16 out of the minus 32, I'm left with plus 2y. So b is plus 2, 1 half of b is plus 1, and 1 half of b squared is still plus 1. But the difference comes in because I have minus 16 times plus 1 is minus 16 that I adjusted the left side by. So I need to do minus 16 on the right to keep this in balance. So again, I, I hope I didn't confuse you too much here. The original was 9x squared minus 72x, and then minus 16y squared minus 32y squared. So out of the y pieces, I need to factor out a minus 16, and then once I do that, I'm left with the y squared plus 2y. So hopefully that's okay. If not, make sure you ask me in class about it so that I can clear up any confusion. All right, now let's simplify this whole second row. So we have what? We have the 9 here in front. And then this one becomes a perfect square trinomial. And it becomes what? It becomes x minus 4 squared. And just like when we were doing circles and we completed the square, whatever our value for 1 half of b is, that's the value that ends up inside this parentheses, kind of a shortcut for us. 
and then minus 16, and this perfect square trinomial becomes y plus 1 squared. And then over here we have 16 minus 16, so they cancel out, and I'm left with just 144. Now, I need to get rid of this. I can't have 144. I have to have what? I have to have 1. So as we were doing before, I'm going to divide everything by 144. And that gives me what? Well, we know 9 and 144 cancel out. We get 16. So I get x minus 4 squared over 16. And then minus 16 and 144 cancel out. I get 9 in the denominator. y plus 1 squared in the numerator equals 1. <coughs> so it took a bunch of work to finally get to this equation. So I'm going to rewrite it up here x minus 4 squared over 16 minus y plus 1 squared over 9 is equal to 1. So I'm going to erase all this work. That's the equation we got to. If you need to pause and follow back through, that's fine. I just want to erase it so we have the room to figure out the rest of the information we need, the center, the foci, the vertices, asymptote if necessary, and so forth, and then sketch it. So once we're at this point, hopefully it looks familiar to the first example we did. So go ahead and hit pause. Try to work this through as far as you can. If you get stuck, if you get frustrated, just hit play, come on back. We'll start working it, and you can always hit stop later on once you get to uh, past the point where you got stuck at. So go ahead and hit pause, come on back and we'll work this. Alright, welcome back. So just as with the first equation, we want to check a few things and get some information out of the equation. First and foremost, is this 1? Yes it is. We uh, took care of that in the earlier work. Then we need to look at this guy. It's a minus sign. So that tells us what? It tells us that this has to be a hyperbola. So with the hyperbola, this is always our value for a squared. This is always the value for b squared. Those, the a's and b's don't switch. They switch with the ellipse, but not with the hyperbola. So then if we want to know, is this a vertical or a horizontal, what do we look at? Well, we look at this portion here. And because it's the x term, that means that this is a horizontal hyperbola. So again, if you get that far at least, you're already points ahead as far as the partial credit goes. Now, we need to start figuring out some of this information. So the first thing we need to figure out is the center. It's a shifted conic. So we have to pull the values from the numerator. I see negative 4, so that means it's plus 4. And I see plus 1, which means it's minus 1. So these are the values I'm going to have to add to the foci, to the vertice values, uh, to the asymptotes, things like that. So first, uh, let's go ahead and figure out <clears throat> excuse me, our vertices. So our vertices with a hyperbola, we're going to need what? We're going to need our values for a. So we have a squared is equal to 16. That means that a is equal to 4. So before, if we were centered at the origin, it would have been what? It would have been plus or minus a and 0. But now, because it's shifted, I need to change these. So it's going to be plus or minus 4 and 0, but I have to add these values. So I have 4 and I have minus 1. So that gives me what? It's going to give me 2 points here. 4 plus 4 is 8. Negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. And then 4 minus 4 is 0, and negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. 
So that's my vertices, the A. So if I want to start trying to sketch this guy, remember that two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So remember that A, the vertices, is the one side of the central box. So my first point is at 8, negative 1. So that's going to be 8 units to the right, negative 1 units down. And then my second point is 0, minus 1. So 0 and just straight down to minus 1. If I want to plot the center, I'm at 4, 1. So I come over 4 units, down 1. So that's my center, so that's good, because I'm right in line with that center to have to draw this hyperbola. So if I want to start drawing or sketching out where the central box is, I can. It's basically the y-axis and the line that goes through positive 8. Now if I want the values for b for the box, well, what is it? Well, b squared is equal to 9, so b is equal to 3. So remember, if it wasn't a shifted conic, it would have just been 0 and then plus or minus b or plus or minus 3. But that's not the case. Now I need to factor in this center. So this is plus 4 and minus 1. So therefore, my two points for the edges of the central box are going to be 0 plus 4 is 4. Negative 1 plus 3 is plus 2. And then the second one is 0 plus 4 is 4. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So if I plot those 4 positive 2 and 4 negative 4, that gives me these points, which means my central box looks something like that. So I can pretty much sketch this guy now because it's the asymptotes go through through the middle and through the corners of this box and then I know it has to stay inside of these asymptotes so I get that picture there now, I still need the foci, I still need the equation for the asymptote. So I'm going to erase this. If you need to catch up, go back and check out the numbers, that's fine. So for the foci, I need my value for c. So it's what? c squared, and it's always a squared, b squared. But because my equation has a minus sign, it's going to be a plus sign in between here. So that means c squared is a squared, which is 16, plus b squared, which is 9. So that means c squared is equal to 25, so c is equal to 5. So now again, I need to make this adjustment for the center. So before, the foci, if I didn't have this shifted center, would have been what? It would have been... So what do we have? Oh, sorry. So we have a horizontal. So that means that we have 0 and then plus or minus c, so plus or minus 5. But now we have to account for the center. So this is plus 4 and minus 1. So the two points for the foci, and then we can look at our graph and see does it make sense. Well, first we have four, 0 plus 4 is 4. Oh, so see, I goofed that up. So because this is horizontal, it's the x value that's changing. So it's uh, 0, or I'm sorry, it's plus or minus the c, which is 5, and then 0. Now we have to account for the center. So this is 4 and minus 1. So we have 4 plus 5 is 9, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And then 4 minus 5 is negative 1, and 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So you can see why I caught myself there, because the values I would have gotten would have had the foci running vertically beyond my center, but this is horizontal, so I needed to change that up. So again, that's how you, if you're working this problem, catch yourself, ask yourself, does it make sense? So the foci is at 9, negative 1, so that's out here. 
right inside that parabola in negative one, negative one. So this way and down again, right inside that parabola. So it's kind of like assurance to me that, all right, you have them figured out correctly because they end up where they're supposed to be. Now for the asymptotes, and this is where it gets a little tricky. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this equation now for the foci. So for the asymptotes with a shifted conic, we're gonna to need to use the point slope formula. So the point slope formula, we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So our m, we already know, this is plus or minus and then it's the B over A or the A over B, depending if it's horizontal. So this was from our basic formula. But before, when we had horizontal, we had what? Y is equal to plus or minus B over A times X. But now our Y value is shifted, our X value is shifted. So that means we have Y minus the Y value for the center, which is negative 1. This is plus or minus 3 fourths. Our B over A, we figured those values out earlier. And then X minus the center point, which is 4. So we're going to have two equations. So first, let's simplify this a little bit. We get Y minus a negative 1 is Y plus 1 is plus or minus 3 fourths times X minus 4. So one equation we get is y plus 1 is equal to the positive slope value. So 3 fourths, positive 3 fourths, times x minus 4. And the second equation we get is y plus 1 is equal to negative 3 fourths, times x minus 4. Because don't remember, we have two asymptotes, so we're going to need two equations here. Now if we simplify this, we get y plus 1, distribute this 3 fourths, so I get 3 fourths x, and then 3 fourths times negative 4, the fourths cancel, so I just get minus 3. And now I need to subtract 1 from both sides, so I get y is equal to 3 fourths x minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4. So that's the equation for one of the asymptotes. For this one, same idea, so y plus 1, distribute this minus 3 fourths, so I get minus 3 fourths x, negative times negative is positive. Again, the fours cancel, so I get plus 3. And now again, subtract 1 from both sides, so I get y is equal to minus 3 fourths x, 3 minus 1 is plus 2. So that's my equation for the other asymptote. So a lot of information there. You can see why these are big point problems have to figure out the center, figure out our A's and B's so that we can get our central box and our vertices, add the X values and Y values within the basic equation so we can get the shifted points, and then figure out the asymptotes using the point slope formula uh, with the center value that we get. So that's it. I know this was a long, complicated example. Hopefully you were able to get through a little bit of it. Try the homework problems. Do as many of them as you can before you come to class. That way, if you have any issues with any of them, we can work on, on them together and answer any questions you might have. So that's it. That's the end of video two for section 11.4. This actually wraps up chapter 11. Uh, so come on back and we'll start dealing with some stuff from chapter 12.